safe and warm. A good place to be on a night like this. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Harold, and my full-time occupation is D.O.G. Dog. I live here with Ms. Monroe and her two kids, Pete and Toby. Oh, and the house is also shared by a cat named Chester, who I am pleased to call my best friend. What are you doing? I'm obeying my orders while the humans are gone. They told you to stare at the wall? They told me to watch the house. Oh, they didn't mean literally. They didn't? Of course not. You're just supposed to keep strangers out. Well, how am I supposed to do that? I don't know. You're the watchdog. Fuck or something. <laughs> I get it. Hey, hey, stop! No, 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 not now. <laughs> when you hear a noise. Why can't they be more precise? You know the humans. They're just trying to give us some sense of purpose, like saying be good, Chester. Yeah, or stay here. Exactly. <laughs> Hold everything. What's the matter? Flee in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> got it. You're shedding again. So what? Well, remember what happened the last time you got hair in that chair? The vacuum cleaner. There's nothing scarier. <laughs> well. I think a little loose hair is a small price to pay for the privilege of owning a cat. You know, Chester, I've heard that some humans don't even like animals. You're right, Carol. Statistics show that many families will never know the pride and joy of owning a pet. We know the history of civilization from ancient Greece to the Isle of Wight, but it all boils down to domestication of animals that no longer bite. Dogs and cats and turtles and parrots, mice and chews and rabbits and parrots, Pigs, strange looking insects with thousands of legs. Oh, it's nothing like a pet. No reason to fret, cause there's nothing like a pet in the house. The Egyptians learned to worship cats, which goes to show acumen can often be quite possible in a certain breed of human. Goats and geese and horses and rats, ducks and owls and geckos and bats, caught the news to love the friends, but don't put a lobster down your pants. Green. 
but as soon as I sat down, I felt the big wishy on the chair and then I jumped back up and an usher came in to check on the noise and mom got a flash like the what was on the chair. Who we showed them up? Who showed them up? Oh, I suppose so, but hold on to them so they don't make any sudden movements. You don't know how animals are like that. Look, 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 look. Carpathian Mountain region. How would you know? Well, I am part Wolf, Wolfhound, you know. What does it say? Take good care of my baby. A note from its mother. Either that or some Romanian sheet music. All right, kids, let's leave our little visitors safe and comfortable. There's an old crate in the garage. That will do for now. I bet he's hungry. I think I'll get him some milk and a carrot. What do you think, Chester? I don't think rabbits like milk. Just get it in here, please. You won't let me. Toby's a little bit catty at it. Oh, one, two. Just get it out here with as little hysteria as possible, please. Carrot looks repulsive, but if there's any milk left, I get it. Mom, Toby's going to keep the rabbit tonight, but that's not fair. But he was already to sleep there. But he is mine. I found him. Oh, sure. You mean you sat on him? He sleeps in my room. No way. Careful, Chester. Petey hasn't changed socks in over a week. All right, I know the best place for the rat. I'll move the chair into the den. You put the cage here. Then you'll get sunshine and fresh air. You told me you're going to drop it. If you're going to drop it, get it up here fast. Give it three. All right, off to bed, everybody. I'm not sleepy. Hey, the rabbit's not drinking his milk. Oh, you're right. This is my chance. It took them three days to name me. Those were three of the most anxious days of my life. Miss Monroe wanted to name me Coffee. I got an idea. How about Run Bun? Oh, hey, There's yeah. it up again. Okay, what then do you think about Fluffy? Give it up, Mom. Yeah, Chester. He looks a lot like you, except he has longer ears and a shorter tail. Oh, not to mention a motor in his nose. Let's see, we found him at the movies. <laughs> How about we name him after the movie? Oh yeah, how about Dracula? Dracula, that's a stupid name. Hey, no, it's not. The guy, I'm the one who found him. I should get to name him. Mom, you're not going to let Toby name him, are you? That's favoritism, and I'll be proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Chester. The, the rabbit has fangs. What do you mean, a 
like a wolf? Did you know more like a snake? Or a bat? What are you talking about? I don't see any fangs. Come in. There is something very strange about that rabbit. We'd better be on our toes.
What the heck is that thing? Uh, beats me. Looks like a white tomato. Pete, have you been using your chemistry set again? No, Mom. Why? Well, what is this? It looks like one of your experiments. Looks like a white tomato. Oh, don't be absurd. How could it? Uh, it does look like a white tomato. Well, there's only one way to find out. Chester, get off the table. Rats. Oh, it is a tomato. Look, the seeds. But it's white. It's all dry. So it is. There is no juice at all. It must have gone bad, but I've never heard of a tomato going white before. Oh, well, let's just throw it away. We'll have breakfast. A white tomato. Very significant. Did you get a good look at it? I guess so. <laughs> then you must notice the peculiar marks on the skin. Like what? Like two punch holes. Oh, sure, whatever you say, Chester. Oh. Okay. Flip it. I want you to look at the book I've been reading. Uh, mark of the vampire. This is very important. Tell me something, Harold. Have you noticed something a little funny about that rabbit? No, but I've noticed a lot of little funny about you lately. Think about it. That rabbit sleeps all day. So do I. So do you. But furthermore, it's got thundery little sharp teeth. So do I. And so do you. And you can get out of the locked cage. So do I. That is a little strange. Remember where they found him? At the movies. Right. Which movie? Dracula. So? So? Remember the note around his neck. You said that it was an obscure dialect of the Carpathian region. The Carpathian mountain region, that's right. Now, what part of the Carpathian mountains? Oh, I don't know. Offhand, I'd say Transylvania. The not Transylvania! That proves my point! My point! And the white tomato confirms that. Confirms why? He's been with his face. The evidence is overwhelming. You mean to say you think manipulation is a- To the vampire, yes! That is what I've been trying to tell you. You're way off base this time, Chester. You do know what a vampire is, don't you? Do I know what a vampire is? You're asking me if I know what a vampire is? That's right. You mean to stand there and ask me if I know? Harold! <laughs> then listen up.
nothing but Toby's homework. But we are supposed to keep watch on the <laughs> Well, what about you? You fell asleep again, didn't you? Oh, here he comes! Places!
The cats don't need baths. Well, at least the house smells good again. Oh, sure, it smells good again, but the danger has returned. The garlic worked, but he really never left his cage last night. Huh? But tonight he'll be free to roam again, and I've got to find a way to stop him. You like what? Well, I've been doing some research on that. All I need is the right equipment. You know, it's not. It's a frozen. All right. I'm going to leave this steak here to finish the frosting. And I know two animals that are going to be in big trouble if they bother it. That means you and you. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Don't give me that look. Just behave yourselves. No steak! This is our chance! Ah, you heard the lady. We're not allowed. Allowed? Would your cousins, the wolves, worry about what's allowed? Well, all righty then. Well, first you got to help me get the nickel out of the cake. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. What's that got to do with this thing? Everything. Oh, okay. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Why did he attack him? Oh, I thought you didn't believe he was a vampire. Well, maybe not, but he still has sharp teeth. <laughs> what kind of dog are you? Afraid of all harms? Need a bunny? Harmons? I thought you said he was a threat to everybody in this house. Oh, he is a threat, but only at night. That's why we have to do it now while the sun's up. Well, how are we going to get the cage open? This claw should do the trick. There. Didn't even wait. Good. Can I have a steak now? Just get him out of the cage and onto the floor. How? How am I supposed to do that? How? Quit howling at me. Just use your head.
now. Yes, ma'am. That's more luck. Now go be friends with Harold. Harold! 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 Look, about last night, I'm sorry. Oh, good for you, Chester. It takes a big cat to admit he's wrong. Now we'll make it with the bunny. Oh, do I have to? Go on, pack the bunny. I know these cats are natural predators, but I won't have none of that. Pack.
Well, you were, you know. I think Ridicule's really thick. 
mean, the wind and the rain are downright ferocious. Of course, here in the Monroe house, it's safe and warm. A good place to be on a night like this. Oh. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Harold, and my full-time occupation is D.O.G. Dog. I live here with Ms. Monroe and her two kids, Pete and Toby. Oh, and the house is also shared by a cat named Chester, who I am pleased to call my best friend. What are you doing? I'm obeying my orders while the humans are gone. They told you to stare at the wall? They told me to watch the house. Oh, they didn't mean literally. They didn't? Of course not. You're just supposed to kick strangers out. Well, how am I supposed to do that? I don't know. You're the watchdog. Bark or something. <laughs> I get it. Why can't they be more precise? You know the humans, they're just trying to give us some sense of purpose, like saying be good, Chester. Yeah, or stay here. Exactly. Hold everything. What's the matter? Flee in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Got it. You're shedding again. So what? Well, remember what happened the last time you got hair in that chair? The vacuum cleaner. There's nothing scarier. <laughs> You know, Chester, I've heard that some humans don't even like animals. You're right, Carol. Statistics show that many families will never know the pride and joy of owning a pet. We know the history of civilization from ancient Greece to the Isle of Wight, but it all boils down to domestication of animals that no longer bite. Dogs and cats and turtles and parrots, mice and chews and rabbits and parrots, squirrels and fish and pot-bellied pigs, strange-looking insects with thousands of legs.
human. After all, she owns us. All right, so here's what happened. So we got to the movie really late because Mom was driving really slow because of the rain. There is nothing wrong with a little extra caution on wet streets. And Mom said not to disturb anyone, so we had to sit in the very last row. Which is about a million miles away from the screen. But as soon as I sat down, I felt to be squishy on the chair and then I jumped back up. And an usher came in to check on the nose and Mom borrowed its flashlight to see what was on the chair. Who could we show them up? Who oh, showed them up? I suppose so, but hold on to them so they don't make any sudden movements. You don't know how animals are like that. Oh. Look, 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 look. <laughs> a rabbit. In the bigger shadow. No, just what we need around here, another mouth to feed. What's that around his neck? Some kind of a note, but I can't make it out. What is it? Just pay for a voice. See, you want to sniff it? Hmm, an obscure dialect of the Carpathian Mountain region. How would you know? Well, I am part Western Wolfhound, you know. What does it say? Take good care of my baby. A note from its mother? Either that or some Romanian sheet music. All right, kids, let's make our little visitor safe and comfortable. There's an old crate in the garage, but that will do for now. I bet he's hungry. I think I'll get him some milk and a carrot. What do you think, Chester? I don't think rabbits like milk. My Toby broke the rabbit's house! I bet he broke it. Just get him in here, please. You won't let me. Toby's a little bit cat yet. And dog. Or two. Just get it out here with as little hysteria as possible, please. Carrot looks repulsive, but if there's any milk left, I get it. Mom, Toby's going to keep the rabbit tonight, but that's not fair. But he will go right next to sleep there. But he is mine. I found him. Oh, sure. You mean you sat on him? He sleeps in my room. No way. I get the rabbit. You can have smelly old caramel with a stupid cat. No, that's it. I'm biting it. Careful, Chester. Petey hasn't changed socks in over a week. All right. I know the best place for the rabbit. I'll move the chair into the den. You put the cage here. Then you get sunshine and fresh air. Tell me you're gonna drop it! You're not gonna drop it! Get it up here fast! Give it three. Alright, off to bed, everybody. I'm not sleepy. Hey, the rabbit's not drinking his milk. Oh, you're right. This is my chance! This rabbit is like two kids I know and needs some sleep. Not yet, Mom. Let's name him first! Exactly, wait right till tomorrow, yeah? No, now we have to have a name! I have to agree with the kid. He took them three days to name me. Those were three of the most anxious days of my life. Miss Monroe wanted to name me Coffee. I've got an idea. How about Run Run? Oh, hey, yeah. come again! Okay, what then do you think about Fluffy? Give it up, Mom! You know, Chester, he looks a lot like you, except he has longer ears and a shorter tail. Oh. Not to mention a motor in his nose. Let's see, we found him at the movies. <laughs> how about we name him after the movies? Oh yeah, how about Dracula? Dracula, that's a stupid name. Hey, no, it's not. The guy. I'm the one who found him. I should get to name him. Mom, you're not going to let Toby name him, are you? That's favoritism, and I'll be proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's a bunny, we found him in Dracula. We'll call him Bunny Cula. Funicula! Way to go, Mom! Scary! That should please everybody. Uh, not until you put that milk down. The name's okay, but I get to feed him. You know, I think I'll put the milk in the refrigerator. Maybe he'll drink it tomorrow. <laughs> hey, what about Chester? Maybe he likes them. <laughs> <laughs> Chester just wants to play. He's obviously had more than enough milk today. Now, off to bed with both of you. Alright, next chapter! Good night, Carol! Good night, you smelly old girl! Quit drooling on me! Yeah. Ow, oh, you stupid cat! Good oh. night, Benicula! You're the best bunny ever! I'm glad you drink your blood! <laughs> sure doesn't say much, does he? I wish they had named him Fluffy. Oh, you're still mad about the milk? That I want to talk about! Ignore the rumbling in my stomach. As you probably noticed by now, Chester is no ordinary cat, though he has taken a strong taste to books. Me too. I like to eat them. <laughs> well, that's strange. What's that? Look at the marks on his back. Oh, it's like he's.
he's wearing a little coat. Not a coat, a cape. Who was that? Oh, it's just Dr. Wasserman next door practicing his music. <laughs> Ooh, I have got to quit reading these horror stories so late at night. Harold! Yes, Chester? The, the rabbit has fangs. What do you mean, like a wolf? You know, more like a snake. Or a rabbit. What are you talking about? I don't see any fangs. Come in. There is something very strange about that rabbit. We'd better be on our toes. Because you 
animals are singing us today, aren't you? Have a rough night? <laughs> oh, it's difficult to see in here. Love to burn down. Holy cow, Pete, get in here! What the heck is that thing? Beats me. Looks like a white tomato. Pete, have you been using your chemistry set again? No, Mom, why? Well, what is this? It looks like one of your experiments. Looks like a white tomato. Oh, don't be absurd. How could it? Uh, well, it, it does look like a white tomato. Well, there's only one way to find out. Chester, get off the table. Rats. Oh, it is a tomato. Look, the seeds. But it's white. It's all dry. So it is. There is no juice at all. It must have gone bad, but I've never heard of a tomato going white before. Oh, well, let's just throw it away. We'll have breakfast. A white tomato. Very significant. Did you get a good look at it? I guess so. <laughs> then you must notice the peculiar marks on the skin. Like what? Like two punch holes. Sure, whatever you say, Chester. Okay. Flip it. I want you to look at the book I've been reading. Mark of the Vampire! This is very important. Tell me something, Harold. Have you noticed something a little funny about that rabbit? No, but I've noticed a lot a little funny about you lately. Think about it. That rabbit sleeps all day. So do I. So do you. But furthermore, it's got thunder and little sharp teeth. So do I, and so do you. And you can get out of the locked cage. <laughs> so do I. That is a little strange. Remember where they found him? At the movies. Right, which movie? Dracula. So? So, remember the note around his neck. You said that it was an obscure dialect of the Carpathian region. The Carpathian mountain region, that's right. Now, what part of the Carpathian mountains? Oh, I don't know. Offhand, I'd say Transylvania. Did I Transylvania that proves my boy! When the white tomato confirms that he's been with his face, the evidence is overwhelming! You mean to say you think manipulative is a- To the vampire! Yes, that is what I've been trying to tell you! You're way off base this time, Chester. You do know what a vampire is, don't you? Do I know what a vampire is? You're asking me if I know what a vampire is? That's right. You mean to stand there and ask me if I know- Harold! <laughs> then listen up.
you been? Helping with Toby's homework. But we are supposed to keep watch on the clock. <laughs> well, what about you? You fell asleep again, didn't you? Oh, here he comes! Please!
Well, at least the house smells good again. Oh, sure, it smells good again, but the danger has returned. <clears throat> the garden worked. Benny Dillon never left his cage last night. Huh? But tonight he'll be free to roam again, and I've got to find a way to stop him. You're like what? Well, I've been doing some research on that. All I need is the right equipment. You know, it's not just a frozen. All right, I'm going to leave this stake here to finish the frosting. And I know two animals that are going to be in big trouble if they bother it. That means you and you. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Don't give them that look. Just behave yourselves. No stake! This is our chance! Ah, you're Herculean. We're not allowed. Allowed? Would your cousins, the wolves, worry about what's allowed? All righty then. Well, first you've got to help because we'll make it loud. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. What's that got to do with this thing? Everything. Oh, okay. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Why did he attack him? Oh, I thought you didn't believe he was a vampire. Well, maybe not, but he still has sharp <laughs> What kind of dog are you? Afraid of all harms? You buddy. Harms? I thought you said he was a threat to everybody in this house. Oh, he is a threat, but only at night. That's why we have to do it now. Well, how are we going to get the cage open? This claw should do the trick. There, didn't even wait. The great. Can I have a steak now? Just get him out of the cage and onto the floor. Wow. How am I supposed to do that? How? Quit howling at me. Just use your head. Use my head? Right. <laughs> okay, buddy. No need to be afraid. I'm just going to pick you up by your fur. Don't need to use your sharp teeth on my tender nose. Uh-oh. What now? I think I'm stuck. Oh, of course you are. There's not room in there for both of you. Just put it out. Oh, you know, a little steak would help motivate me. Don't worry about the steak, Harold. Just push. Come on. Come on. Oh, excellent. Still asleep. I'm still stuck, you know. Ah, no problem. You can help me from there. Let's eat first. Oh, hold on. Just read this, so I'll be sure that I'm doing it right. Oh, right. In order to destroy the vampire and end his reign of terror, it is necessary to place a sharp stake into the vampire's heart. Wait a minute. A sharp stake? What kind of steak is that? I can taste it and tell you it's sharp. <laughs> Never mind. That's a sirloin. All right, Panicula. This is it. I'm sorry that I've had to take it to this extreme, but if he'd only listened to me, this wouldn't be necessary. Are you sure that's what the book meant? Of course I'm sure. Hey, I thought I got the steak. Oh, when I'm done with it. You tricked me. It's not having much effect, is it? Let me out of here! Naughty cat. 
Are you ready to behave yourself? Yes, ma'am. That's more like it. Now go be friends with Harold. Harold! 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 Look, about last night, I'm sorry. Oh, good for you, Chester. It takes a big cat to admit he's wrong. Now we'll make it with the bunny. Oh, do I have to? Go on, catch the bunny. I know these cats are natural predators, but I will have none of that. Yeah. 
serves you right. And Harold, while we're out here, he's probably giving some shots. I know fair. Quiet boy. You better, won't he, Mom? Oh, I wish I knew Pete. He looks awfully sweet. <laughs> Not a very good way to end the story, is it, with everything so hopeless? But thank heavens for the neighborhood vet. She said that when Benicula was suffering from extreme dehydration and put him immediately on a diet of fresh vegetable juice. Wow, what do you know? Cool, look at him go! Chester was diagnosed as emotionally overwrought. The vet said he was suffering from sibling rivalry with Benicula. Hey, Chester, is a sibling anything like a sapling? <laughs> Only in your case. Well, at any rate, the vet gave the Monroe the name of a good pet cat psychiatrist. Oh, we'll get you some therapy, Kenny. And as for me, I was a for shots for several months, so I got a doggy pop instead. <laughs> and oddly enough, there have been no more sightings of white vegetables. Which only proves my theory. What do you mean? Obviously, the liquid diet satisfied his cravings. So he's not a vampire. No, well, he's a vampire, but he's a modern vampire. He uses a juicer. Well, whatever he is, he still hasn't talked that we become really good friends. And he snuggles up next to me every night on the couch. How sweet. Well, don't be jealous, Chester. You know you're still the only one I can talk to. Put it there. That is a dog's trick. Cats don't shake hands. Hey, quit pushing. See, even Benicula knows we should be friends. Well, apologies don't come easily for cats. As we all know. But I guess I can put up with this long-eared groundhog if you can. <laughs> Just don't touch the chair. So that's the story of the mysterious stranger and how he became not so mysterious after all. Like this house was very unnatural and came to stay. But there's no reason for concern. Benicula just wants to play. It could be those books they made. 